With what judgment you judge people, you're going to be judged with that. That's right. And with the measure you use, it'll be measured back to you. Say back to you. Back to you. Verse 1 is probably the most known and yet misunderstood scriptures in all of the Bible. What's it mean to judge not? Was Jesus telling us to just go around trusting any and everybody? Absolutely not. But what Jesus was teaching us was to make righteous judgments. Yes. In other words, don't judge a person based on their skin color. Don't judge a person based on their outward appearance. Don't judge a person based on what somebody else told you about that person. Judge people based on their character and your own interactions with them. Can you say amen? I'm reminded of the first time I met Brother Louie. How do you remember Brother Louie? He was a very sweet man. And uh, first time I saw him, I thought that dude is crazy. He a loco in the cabeza. Ashley's like, yeah. And all of you were thinking the same thing as I was. I, I know that. Praise the Lord. Brother Louie walked in here with an American flag duct taped to a broom that he carried on his shoulder like a soldier would. And, uh, yeah, and no soldiers don't carry brooms on their shoulder but brother Louis did and brother Louis walked around with sweats underneath his shorts and I don't know why he did that brother Louis was always smiling always laughing always picking up trash in, in the grass area and in the parking lot and uh, the funniest thing about brother Louis though is that he wore baby shorts on top of his head and you can see the little legs sticking out like Martian antennas or something. We all thought he was crazy, and he kind of was, praise the Lord. But after meeting with Brother Louie and kind of getting to know him, yeah, he was crazy, but he was crazy in love with Jesus. Amen. You see, man has a problem with looking at somebody on the outward. We look at their skin color and think, oh yeah, they're just a bad person because of their race. Oh, we look at a person wearing the clothes that they're wearing. Ah, they must be a bad person uh, because of the attire that I see them wear. Uh, listen, man looks on the outward, but God looks at the heart. Lord, help me to see people like you. I don't want to walk around thinking the worst about everybody. You ever met somebody like that? I mean, they've never met, they've never met anybody that they approve of. They're the only perfect ones in all the world. Oh, I tell you, I don't want to walk around thinking the worst of everybody. I don't want to walk around thinking everybody's out to get me. Yes. You need to realize that you don't matter that much. Oh, well, everybody thinks this about me. Maybe nobody thinks about you. Oh. Come on, that hits right on our flesh, doesn't it? Well, everybody thinks this about me. You really think people live their lives every day constantly thinking about William, constantly thinking about Little Phil, constantly thinking about Sister Miranda? Absolutely not. People are busy living their own lives, and a lot of times we don't even cross people's mind, but yet we hold grudges and offenses against them. When Jesus said your problem was you judged that individual and you didn't somebody I don't want to walk around thinking everybody's after what I got that's right that's right come on well man if if that former pastor starts attending my church man he may try to steal my church let me tell you something anybody ever comes and if everybody wanted them leaving unless somebody else be that pastor that'd be fine with me <laughs> come on I mean that. I go past people who don't want me to be their pastor. I mean that. Praise the Lord. I'm here to tell you, church, we need to walk around thinking everybody's after what we got. Amen. Listen, I'm not building my kingdom, the kingdom of William. I'm here and called by God to build up his kingdom and to see people get saved, to see people get developed, to see people grow. It's not about me and you. It's all about Christ. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. I don't want to draw people to me. No. Because if I get you too close to me, you're going to see all my flaws. Right. 
Amen. Yes. So I want to draw people to Christ. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me. Lord, help. help me not to judge people unrighteously. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 tells us that love bears all things. Love believes all things. And love hopes all things. Love always thinks the best. Yes. Come on, Come on. Come on. Love always thinks the best about people and not the worst. Right. Come on. Right. Well, I can't help but think the worst. That's the devil talking to you. Yeah. Does it mean that we don't use wisdom and common sense? Yeah. We're supposed to use wisdom. Yeah. We're to use common sense. The other day we were at the sugar mill having a uh, board meeting. Me, and Rick, and Miranda, and Linda, and Brother Wayne, and I, we saw a man walk in there with a thing that looked like a machete. Oh, no. This guy walk in there, and I'm just minding my own business in the back corner of this, uh, this restaurant. And this guy walks in, he's all mad, right? He's, can you believe this? I mean, you know, he's all mad. And all of a sudden, a cook walks in there to the guy holding the machete. And they're talking together, and I'm thinking, I hope today's not the day, praise the Lord, <laughs> for him, not me, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. Oh, well, but you see, what it was is that there was a machete being used to cut meat in the back. What if I would have just judged that person right off the top of my head? Sometimes we murder people we don't even realize it because we judge them like we come on somebody. Sometimes we murder people, we murder their character, we've never had any interactions with them. All we did is we just misunderstood them. God's saying, quit worrying about everybody else. Start worrying about your own walk. Come on. Jesus also told us that we will be judged by the same standard that we judge other people. If we hold everybody else to an extremely high standard, God will hold you to just as high of a standard. Yes. It's like a boomerang. How many ever played with a boomerang before? You know, you throw it out and you know it comes back to you. The judgment we throw at other people, it'll come back to us. Yes. The judgment that you throw at other people will come back to us. So rather than throw judgment at everybody, why don't we throw mercy and grace? Come on. Come on, because that's, it's going to boomerang back. It's going to come back. Yes. So rather than throw your judgment, your condemnation, your attitude on people unjustly, throw mercy at them. Amen? Yes. Verses 3 and 5. Y'all still with me? Yep. Yes. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Come on. How can you say to your brother, let me remove the speck from your eye, and look, a plank is in your own eye? Hypocrite. Verse 5. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, yes. and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Yes. Jesus really did have a sense of humor. <laughs> Jesus said, before you try to clean the sawdust out of your brother's eye, make sure you take the telephone pole yeah. out of your own eye. Come on. A lot of times, the very things that we accuse other people of are the things that we got issues with ourselves. Yeah. Hello? Jesus said, before we can clean everybody else's life up, we make sure our own houses are clean. Come on. Amen? One time I saw a guy riding a speed bike here in Oldell. This big old boy. And uh, I said, honey, look at that guy on that speed bike. I can't believe the bike is moving that fast with that fat of an individual on it. That's what I told Miranda. Immediately. The Holy Spirit reminded me of what was in my hand. No joke. I was eating a donut at that very exact time. I'm not going to tell you what else I am. You don't need to know that's God's business. <laughs> But you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes we get on to everybody else. We, we can see their faults, but we can't see our own. Praise the Lord. God is saying, before you go and judge everybody else, make sure 
sure your own life is clean. Uh, make sure your own life is straight. Amen. If all of us would just focus on our own walks with God rather than everybody else's walks, we'd be a whole lot better off. Before we go around trying to fix everybody else, we've got to make sure we're not broken ourselves. Verse number six, do not give what is holy to the dogs. Come on, somebody. Nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear who into pieces? You into pieces. Last week in Jacksonville, Florida, a pastor was arguing with his cousin about hell. The pastor's cousin did not believe in hell, did not believe in God, and this pastor was trying to convince his cousin that hell was real and that God was real. However, this argument or debate became so heated that the pastor's cousin pulled out a gun and shot the pastor. The pastor, last I heard, is okay. But they're going to charge his cousin with attempted murder, and they should. But that right there is a prime example of not throwing your pearls out to the pigs. Amen. Amen. There was no point in arguing with his relative that didn't believe in God. No point in arguing with his relative that didn't believe in the Bible. He was casting his pearls before the pigs, and the pigs trampled him under their feet. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times that we need to reach out, but whenever you go from trying to reach out to arguing with one another, you, you've got a clear, a clear sign, a clear indication that you, you're playing with the swine. You're throwing your pearls before the swine, and if you ain't careful, they're going to trample you under their feet. There's some people in this life that you're going to come across who just don't want to hear the gospel. Maybe their hearts have been hardened as a judgment of God. God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Maybe their conscience has been seared with a hot iron as the Apostle Paul spoke about. A lot of people like that can't even feel the dealings of God because their conscience has been seared with a hot iron. And sometimes... Maybe they're just not ready to hear and receive the gospel at that specific moment. We need to use some discernment and judgment to figure out how to reach these people. Amen. Rather than waste your time trying to convert and save people who don't want to be converted or saved, it's better to move on and focus on other individuals that God has placed in your path. I learned a long time ago, I only have so much breath, so much energy, I can only do so much. I can't afford to pour into people that are filled with spiritual holes. If I do that, I'm going to stay drained. I'm going to stay discouraged. I'm going to stay defeated. I don't need to be pouring into people with holes in them. I'm going to pour into people that have been patched up through the blood of Jesus Christ to where they can only be filled but their cup can run over. Make sure you know what you're pouring into. Jesus said, don't throw your pearls before the pigs. Pearls are valuable. Any of you ladies have like real pearls? One. <laughs> How many of you have real fake pearls? <laughs> yeah, real fake. They, they real, but they real fake. <laughs> I saw a rapper on, on Facebook the other day in this. It's some weird video. This lady goes around and she walks up to these rich looking people. And she goes, oh, what do you do for a living? This guy's like, oh, I'm a rapper. And she's like, oh, cool. How much do you make? I make about like 50 G's a month. She's like, oh, cool. She goes, oh, all your jewelry is real? And he goes, yeah, it's all real. I got this right here, 40 grand right here, and this is my ring. And So she's like, oh, cool. I, hey, I brought a diamond tester. <laughs> and she starts testing. And a lot of his stuff wasn't real. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm telling you, church, we need to, uh, we need to be careful where, where we are throwing our pearls because pearls are extremely valuable. Yeah. One of the greatest pearls that God has given us is our time. Yeah. 
So don't throw your time into people or things that just don't appreciate it. All that does is drain you physically and emotionally. And if you keep pouring into people with holes all over their lives, you're going to stay drained. This is a good practical teaching tonight. How do we know the ones that God is calling us to reach? Notice the next couple verses. Verses 7 and 8. Ask, and it will be given to you. Just ask God. Seek and you'll find. Knock and it will be opened to you. Verse 8. For everyone who asks, receives. Did you hear that? If you ask, you receive. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened unto them. Uh, rather than throw our time and energy into people that are not going to be receptive, uh, we need to ask God who he is calling us to reach. Jesus said if we ask, the answer will be given. If we seek him, we'll find that person. If we knock on the right doors, those doors will be open. God has placed all kinds of people around your life that only you have the ability to reach. So let's ask God for wisdom and do our best to reach them. Another reason God told us to ask, seek, and knock is because God wants us to continually go to Him. God's not playing hard to get. But he's trying to cultivate a prayer life with you. Amen. He wants to develop a deeper relationship with you. He don't just want to hear from you when you're in trouble. He don't just want to hear from you whenever you are stuck in a bind. God wants to commune with you on a regular basis. Verses 9 through 11. Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? Amen. If you're praying for wisdom, God's going to give you that divine wisdom that you need. If you're praying for guidance, God will make sure that you have the proper guidance that you can trust. If you ask God for bread, He's not going to give you a stone. If you ask him for fish, he's not going to give you a serpent. We serve a prayer answering God that wants us to commune with him on a daily basis. Verse 12. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Jesus told us to treat others the way we want to be treated. If people treated you the way you treat them, how would you feel in your life? If all of us would treat people the way we wanted to be treated, this world would be a better place. If churches treated people the way they wanted to be treated, the house would always be full. What if we always gave people the love, time, and attention that we want? What if we always gave people the patience and the grace that we want? What we always, what we always gave people the mercy and forgiveness? Would we always give people the mercy and grace and forgiveness? The church would be a whole lot better if we treated others the way we wanted to be treated. Notice what Jesus said. Do unto others as you would have them do to you. In other words, you've got to initiate the contact. You go out and do. Say do. Yeah. Just do it. Like we preached a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Now you're remembering that message. Huh? <laughs> do unto others. Don't wait for them to treat you good for you to do good to them. You go out and do good because this is a command. Not a suggestion. Amen. Right. Notice the order. Jesus didn't say, once somebody does something nice to you, then do something nice for them. No, he said, you just go out and do it. Amen. Verse 13 and 14. These are the last two verses for tonight. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. 
Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, there are few who find it. I wish I'd have brought one from my house, but this will do. This is a, uh, you know what? I got me some tape. Hold on. I'm just going to make something real quick. Here we go. When you're from Oldville, sometimes you just come up with it. Yes. Figure it out. <laughs> All right. How many of you ever had to make a funnel before? Yep. Don't laugh at me, Phil. <laughs> Yeah, the Dalian way. We got a funnel right here. Okay. Y'all see it? <laughs> what? I got well, they'll funnel. Let's, let's see this. <laughs> Jesus said, straight is the gate. Narrow is the way that leads to life. But broad. Wide is the road that leads to destruction. Life is like this funnel right here. A lot of people going through life this way. Because it's broad, right? It's wide. I could take my alcoholism through here. I can take my drugs through here. I can take my lying through here. I can take my cheating here. I can take my racism through here. Yeah. I can take my gossip through here. I can take my backbiting here. But what happens? The longer you go down this cone here, this funnel called life, it gets more and more narrow. More and more hard to move around. And really, if this funnel was a real funnel, it would get more and more dark the further you go down it. But Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way. And not a lot of people go down that way. Whenever you begin to follow Christ, it's like you're going in the opposite side of the funnel. You can't bring a lot of your other junk that you were carrying with the world. You had to lay that off at the altar. Come on. Amen. Now you can fit through this narrow way. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You can fit through this narrow hole. But notice that the longer you go through life, it doesn't get darker and darker. It gets brighter and brighter. It doesn't close in on you. It gets wider and wider. Straight is the gate. Narrow is the way. Do you want to live a successful life? Do you want to live a life under the blessings of Almighty God? Then enter into the straight and the narrow gate. Yeah, it's easy to go through the broad gate. Everybody goes down the broad road. But go down that narrow road. The straight and narrow. Go down that road and you'll experience life like it's intended to be experienced. Amen? Let's all stand to our feet. Sister Linda, could you come to the piano? Praise the Lord. Let's just lift up our hands in this house. Lord, we, we praise you and we love you. We thank you, Lord God, for the study of your word. Your word is true. Your word is life. And Lord, tonight we apply these truths to our hearts and our lives. Holy Spirit, change our thinking. Change our outlook on people and on life. Jesus, forgive us for our pride and our arrogancy cleanse us through your precious blood Lord we want to live by this word today anybody can say I believe in this Bible right here but are you living it anybody can say I, oh, I believe in what this book says but if you're not living it do you really believe it I don't just want to hear God's word. I want to do it. 
I want to see God's word. Judge not that you be not judged. And say, you know what? I'm not like that. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Man, I judge people as soon as I see them. Judge not that you be not judged. Because remember, judgment has a boomerang effect. And look at that person over there. They got bad intentions. Don't be surprised whenever one day somebody comes along your path. And they tell somebody about you. They got bad intentions and they don't even know you. It boomerangs. Don't throw out judgment. Throw out mercy. Amen? Amen. Let's all find a place to pray tonight. Let's just commune with God. And let's just say, Lord God, we want to apply. We want to apply this word to our hearts. Hallelujah.
Oh, I tell you, we serve a loving Father. Amen? Amen. Amen. Did you learn anything tonight? Yes. I hope so. Amen. Uh, and I'll tell you, just let's throw out mercy. Throw out mercy because I'll tell you, oftentimes whenever we see somebody stumble, or some, when somebody does us wrong, we want judgment. God judged them for that. They stole from me. Judge them. But when we slip up, what do we ask God for? Lord, have mercy on me. <laughs> Let's not be hypocrites. Let's love. Let's love one another. Let's love God. Let's love people enough to tell them the truth. And uh, I'll praise the Lord. God's good, isn't he? Amen. Remember, uh, men's meeting this Saturday uh, at uh, 12 o'clock over at Brother Justin's house. And uh, we're going to have a wonderful time uh, in the Lord. Amen. Appreciate uh, everybody being here tonight. I know Wednesday nights are, it's uh, cold and it's dark outside. But uh, praise the Lord. I appreciate you coming on out tonight, hearing the word. Because like we said on Sunday morning, your pastor needs to see you, your kids need to see you, and your church needs to see you. Amen. So uh, praise the Lord. Appreciate everybody being here tonight. Uh, I'm going to ask if uh, Brother Robert would dismiss us in a word of prayer. Love you. Did you fall asleep? <laughs> you look so tired. You fell asleep. Wayne, no. did, Wayne, 